Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is Kate and welcome back to our channel. All right, today we're going to be sharing with you some pretty amazing stories, miracles that we've experienced after praying the beautiful and powerful St. Therese Rose Novena. So we mentioned in this video recently that it is tradition that if you pray to St. Therese a novena, which is nine days of prayer, and ask for her intercession, then when God is ready to answer your prayer, St. Therese will send you a heavenly rose to let you know. Because sometimes when your friends are praying for you, they'll do something nice like send you flowers. And since we have received heavenly roses on more than one occasion, we are really excited today to share those stories with you. Okay, so we don't talk a lot about this on our channel, but when Kate was three years old, she was very sick and getting sicker all the time. We had been to different doctors and different specialists, had tried different treatments and medications, but honestly, it just wasn't looking good for baby Kate. <laughs> Nothing was working. And I was very young at the time, so I actually don't remember all of this very well, which might be a good thing. Yeah, it's definitely a good thing. This was an extremely difficult time for our family, and we did a whole lot of praying. And one of the saints whom we asked for help was St. Therese, the little flower. And as it happened at the time, my very favorite color was bright pink. But it wasn't normal pink, it wasn't pretty pink, it was like Pepto-Bismol neon garish pink. Oh my goodness, it was such a <laughs> jarring shade of pink. And whenever we went into a store like Target or if we went out somewhere and Kate saw this color pink, she was just drawn to it like a magnet. It was the only color clothing that she wanted to wear. And I remember thinking one day, as if life isn't hard enough right now, we are surrounded by <laughs> Pepto-Bismol pink on all fronts. Yeah, but I was so sick that you just put up with it and went with it. Yes, it brought you such happiness that we just went with the awful shade of pink and we kept on praying day after day after day. And then one day, I, I will never forget this, I was praying my St. Therese Rose Novena prayer and then afterwards I was talking to St. Therese and I was just saying, look, St. Therese, I know you're going to help us. I know that God is going to heal Kate. So I'm just going to keep praying. I am never going to give up. But really, St. Therese, where is Kate's rose? Can you just help us out here? And it wasn't long after that that we went to daily Mass. And after Mass, there was something going on in the back of the church. So we had to exit the church through a different side door. And I remember being so annoyed because we rarely use the side door because it led out to the super long way around the church to the parking lot. And I had barely made it through mass with a very sick child and then an older child who was not behaving very well. So that was not a happy day for me because it was also raining very hard that day. But next to that side door, there was a large statue of the Blessed Mother kind of tucked away in the shadows that we didn't see very often because we didn't use the door very often. So on that dark and rainy day, we were forced to use that side door and right there on the floor in front of the statue of the Blessed Mother, there was a gigantic vase of, guess what? roses. But they weren't just like normal pretty red or white or pink roses. They were pink, but guess what shade? Yep, that bright Pepto-Bismol pink that I loved so much at the time. They were almost neon in the dark hallway. I just remember stopping in my tracks and looking at the vase. Number one, it was gigantic. And number two, it was completely overflowing with roses. Not just a dozen or two dozen, but probably over five dozen. I don't know, I stopped counting after 50. So it's interesting to note that these roses were such an unnatural shade and that there were so many of them. But also this gigantic vase was just sitting in the middle of the floor, taking up half the hallway, and you absolutely could not miss it. Which is important to note because this story has two parts. The roses were almost glow in the dark pink, and I remember being so happy that day because I felt like these roses are definitely from St. Therese. And in fact, it was not long after that at all that we found a new doctor, Dr. Eric Kossoff at Johns Hopkins, and he put Kate on the road to recovery. So I grew up hearing the story of the pink roses and St. Therese over and over and over again. My brother and I would have to listen to it every single October 1st, which is her feast day. I'm a little bit like, you know, your old grandpa. 
it makes you listen to the story over and over and over again. So yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> So now going into sort of part two, we fast forward a couple of years. I'm eight, my brother's 10, and we're leaving on a family vacation. We're flying out on October 1st, which like I just said, is St. Therese's feast day. So of course, in the car on the way to the airport, I have to tell everyone again the story of St. Therese and the roses. But for some reason on that day, my son just had had enough. He did not want to hear the story of the miraculous pink roses even one more single time. So he was pretty much just done, heard it one too many times, didn't want to have to hear it again. And he even told me from the great height of his 10 year old wisdom that I was probably just exaggerating the number of roses, that pink roses are pretty common anyway, and nobody cares about St. Therese, she's dead. And I remember telling him, well, look, you better watch out because St. Therese just heard that and it's her feast day, she'll show you. But he didn't care, he was unconcerned. So then we head into the airport, we have two hours to wait before our flight takes off. And so the kids are getting pretty restless and my son says, you know, can we take a walk? So I say, sure, let's go for a stroll through the terminal. <laughs> So eventually he spots a sharper image store in the airport and asks if he can run ahead and look around. There's all sorts of cool gadgets and technology. It was just a fun place to kill time. So he runs off to the store and Kate and I are kind of lagging behind. And after a couple of minutes, I look up and I notice that he's running back towards us very quickly and he does not look good. He is very pale and he's also sweating. So I asked him, what happened? Did you go into the store? And he says, no, he didn't go in. He changed his mind, doesn't want to go at all. Just wants to go back to the gate and wait for the plane. So that definitely got my mom radar up and I decided, well, I just need to go down to that store and see what happened, what could have upset him so much. So as we get to the store, I see something unusual right out in front of the store on the ground. And this is a busy airport and people are having to dodge around this item. And it is an extremely large vase full of roses. Not a dozen roses, not two dozen, over four dozen roses. And guess what color they were? Yep, that same Pepto-Bismol pink. So it was suspiciously random that this big vase of roses was just sitting out in front of a random store in a very busy airport on the Feast of St. Therese. So she definitely did show him. She was pretty feisty in her day, so she really has his number. I've always felt that she has a particular interest in my son still to this day, so I always tell him, you need to behave because St. Therese is watching. So that one is our absolute favorite St. Therese story, but we do have another one. And this was during a time when we were trying to sell our house and move to a different city. The housing market was in a big slump at that time, so the house just wouldn't sell. So we finally had to just move to a whole different city in another state and leave our one house behind and rent another. So we were doing the double payment thing, a rent payment and a mortgage payment every month. And this went on for almost two years and we were just ready for that <laughs> double payment situation to end. So when October rolled around, we decided to do a novena to St. Therese, ask for her intercession. And while we were praying it one day, this scraggly rose bush appeared on the side of the driveway at the rental house. And it was basically just a bundle of sad sticks, except for one single beautiful rose that was blooming on a branch. But then we wondered, has this rose bush been here all the time and we're new so we just didn't see it? We didn't know. This rose bush just blended in with all the shrubs aside from the rose. So we weren't sure, is this from St. Therese or just kind of a random rose blooming? But St. Therese knows that we're a little hard headed here, a little slow to catch on. Plus I've always read that if you know God is sending you a message, he will make it abundantly clear. There won't be any doubt. So sure enough, a couple of days later on my birthday, the doorbell rang and there was a beautiful delivery of roses randomly from a friend. 
And then of course, later that day, we got a call from our realtor saying that we had a good solid offer on the house. And it sold just a little while later. So St. Therese, definitely a good friend to have in heaven. And a fun one because what other saint sends you flowers? <laughs> So those are our St. Therese Rose miracle stories, and we hope you enjoyed hearing about them. Let us know in the comments if you have a rose story to share. We would love to hear it. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.